Hi, this is Kim. This is the Cell Structure and Function Lab. And this video is specifically for activity one of three. So there are three activities associated with this lab. This video is just for activity one. Activity one covers two important concepts, which should be reviewed for you at this point. You should have already covered cell structure and function in your lecture class. You should have also covered cell membranes and transport across cell membranes, the concepts of osmosis and diffusion, and all of the terms associated with transport across cell membranes. Activity one is related to two very important concepts. One is surface area to volume ratio in cells and why cells cannot become large, and also diffusion rate and how surface area to volume ratio affects diffusion rate in cells. We are going to demonstrate that today using potatoes. So you do need some materials today that are not included in your lab kit. So I'm just going to fast forward through all of this background material and go to the materials. So most of these on this list of needed but not supplied are used in today's activity. In fact, pretty much everything except for the blank paper is needed for today. So the blank paper is used for activity three. You do not need that for activity one, but you do need one large or two medium potatoes. They don't have to be white potatoes. They really can be any kind of potato. You need some tap water. You need a cutting board and knife. And I would say a potato peeler would be great too. These do have to be peeled. And you need some paper towel. Two of them are going to be damp for keeping your potatoes on until you start the experiment. And two are going to be dry that you will scoop the potatoes onto once they have soaked in iodine for 80 minutes. You need a timing device to time exactly 80 minutes. This iodine can stain and also damage your skin and eyes. I advise you to please wear your safety goggles cover all surfaces that you will be working on with aluminum foil or a plastic wrap or something that will prevent them from getting stained. And also I advise you to wear your gloves because it will stain your hands. I want to just quickly um, show you some instructions on the board. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And then we're going to come back and talk about cell surface area to volume after we do that. Okay, so looking at the board, Sorry, this is a tiny board in my bedroom. <laughs> okay, so first you're going to peel and cut the potatoes. Again, these do need to be completely peeled and you're going to cut them to very specific sizes. Okay, so the sizes that you're going to cut them to are indicated on the board and all of them will be squares except for this one. Okay, this one's going to be the only rectangle, but everything else has the same length and width. Those measurements are in centimeters and remember when you look at your metric ruler, the centimeters are the whole numbers and the millimeters are the little lines. So 2.5, that would be 25 millimeters. It would be right there. Okay, so remember how to use this correctly so you get the correct size potatoes. Once all six of these are cut, then you're going to store them on a damp paper towel. And now you're going to make your iodine solution. So you're going to get two graduated cylinders the large one and the smaller one, and you're going to measure 150 milliliters of water into one of the plastic cups that was included in your lab kit, and also 30 milliliters of the iodine. So you'll have 180 milliliters total of solution in this cup. You'll mix that together and just keep this off to the side. Okay, now you're going to take two additional cups from the lab kit, and you're going to put the potatoes in here. And how you put them in is very important. They cannot be touching each other. Okay, we want them to be completely surrounded by the iodine solution. So you're going to have to kind of be clever about how you arrange them. I would say maybe three potato chunks per cup and maybe put the two and a half by two and a half with the smallest one and then one of the medium sized ones, but arrange them in a way that they're not touching and they're not stacked on top of each other. Then you're going to add the iodine solution until the potatoes are completely submerged. Sorry, I need to move this down. So how much iodine solution you put in there, I can't tell you. It's going to be until the potatoes are completely submerged. You're going to allow them to soak for exactly 80 minutes. If you allow them to soak for too long, the diffusion will go all the way through the potato and it will wreck the experiment. So 80 minutes exactly with your timer. Then you are going to take the plastic spoon. You're going to scoop the potatoes out onto a paper towel 
And then you're going to cut each one in half and you're going to measure the diffusion distance. The way you're going to measure how far the iodine is diffused is when the iodine joins with the starch that's in the potato, it is going to turn dark blue to black in color. And you're going to measure how far into the potato that has gone. Please, please, please read the directions for specifically how to cut them in half. That's why this asterisk is here, because especially on the rectangular one, there is going to be a very specific direction that you need to cut that one. So please pay attention to those directions. Okay, now I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to take you to some more information about surface area to volume ratio, which is the concept of this lab. So this might or might not be review, depending on what um, your lecture instructor covered, but it's important to realize that the, the limitation on cell size and really on organism size, if you are a single-celled organism, there's only so big you can get. So before organisms became multicellular, they could only get to a certain size, and that's because of this concept of surface area to volume ratio. As the volume of your cells gets bigger, the volume increases faster than the surface area. Okay, so if you look at this big fat cell, it has a lot of volume relative to its surface area. Compared with these little cells, larger surface area compared to the volume. So the volume is small relative to the surface area. So imagine materials diffusing into or out of the cell. If it's a material coming into the cell and it has to diffuse all the way through the cell, that's going to take a very long time relative to this cell that has a lot of surface area and you've got the materials coming in from all sides, the diffusion rate in the smaller cell is going to be much faster. So as cell size increases, the volume increases faster than the surface area. Okay, so that means surface area to volume ratio decreases. There's less surface area relative to the volume. The larger the surface area to volume ratio, the better, better the diffusion rate, the faster the diffusion rate. So, okay, this has a large surface area relative to its volume, even though it's a smaller cell. That's a very important concept to understand. This has a much faster diffusion rate. Small surface area relative to the volume, in other words, big volume, smaller surface area, that is going to cause a dramatic decrease in the diffusion rate. So in order to build bigger organisms, organisms had to become multicellular. I wanna show you these two multicellular organisms as an example of this concept in an entire organism. Okay, so let's start with this guy. He's the flatworm. This is a gorgeous marine flatworm. And you can see that this worm has a very large surface area relative to its volume. It's very flat. And this worm relies a lot on diffusion to move materials in and out of its cells and through its body. So it can't get fat. And it's very limited in its size by the fact that it doesn't have a complex, complex vas vascular system to move materials around. It's just relying on diffusion. So its strategy then is I have to be flat. I can't get a lot of volume in my body because I have to have a large surface area for diffusion of materials. If he gets fat, there's no way those materials are going to diffuse all the way to the center of the body without a complex vascular system. Let's compare that with this segmented worm. This is an earthworm, much more advanced. Not only is this organism segmented, which means he can specialize his body segments, but he's fat. So he has a large volume relative to his surface area. He has to have a vascular system to carry materials to his cells. So different strategy between this worm and this worm, and it has a lot to do with the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, now I wanna look at the exact lab exercise questions today because I just feel that you need some reminders for how to calculate some of these things. And I'm giving you the sample data. Please do not copy this data. 
I mean, come on. We need pictures of you actually doing the lab. So don't just copy this data and say this is your data. I'm giving you this data so you can see how these calculations are made. Okay, so the first set of calculations are a little simpler than the second set. So for this first, okay, here's our 2.5 times 2.5 centimeter piece of potato. And then its height is 2.52, so it's a cube. So these calculations are pretty easy. For this one, they don't want you to actually calculate it. They just want you to say 2.5 by 2.5. Okay, now this is after you cut the potato, this is data you're going to actually record, not calculate. Okay, so this is pretend data. All black is what you will record if it diffused all the way through the potato. So that would mean the area of white that's left on the potato is zero. Again, I'm just showing you this as an example for how to record your data. In fact, I'm not saying that this data is even correct for how the experiment should go. It's just showing you examples of how to calculate your data. Okay, so if you get confused while you're doing your calculations, please just go back to this section of the lab. I'm not going to walk you through every one of these calculations for every cell, but it's here if you need it. So go back to it and use it to help yourself if you need that help. So you can just pause the video here and look at this table. The next table has more information that's a little bit harder to calculate. Okay, so these formulas that are written here, you know, they were trying to fit this entire table on one page and so it's kind of a mess. So I'm going to actually walk you through this first calculation. Okay, so for this first column, the way they got this 37.5 is first they did length times width times two. Okay, so that's going to be 2.5 times 2.5 times two. And that's going to give you 12.5. Okay, so I'm going to just type that right here. So 2.5, oops, times 2.5 times two. And if you do that on your calculator, that equals 12.5. Okay, then we're going to do the next number. It's width times height times four. Okay, so the width is 2.5, okay, height is 2.5, and then we're going to do that times four because we have four sides to the potato. Sorry, I couldn't find my phone to calculate this. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, so 2.5 times 2.5 times four is 25. Okay, so 25 plus 12.5, that's going to give us 37.5. So you see you eventually add these two together. So I'm just showing you that as the first example of how to use these formulas. Okay, this next one, length times width times height, that's going to be easy. That's 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5. Okay, then you're going to divide 37.5 by 15.6. That's your surface area to volume ratio but it's not really expressed as a ratio, they're dividing the surface area by the volume, which is another way to express that. Okay, so again, I'm not going to walk you through this entire thing. Just if you're having problems with your calculations, pause the video at this point and go back to this section and look at the examples and look at how they made that calculation all the way across to make sure you're getting this correct. Because ultimately, you are going to discuss your results and you're going to base your discussion on this part right here. Okay. Question number one, I, I have a little tip here. You can do that really in one sentence. Okay, you can relate your answer to diffusion of the iodine. The next question, this should be a very detailed answer and you should cite your actual results using that last column of numbers. So your percentage in the last column of table 1B. Okay, and you must also answer the why part. 
So you're going to say something about surface area to volume ratio and how it affects diffusion rate in cells. And you're going to relate that back to your actual percentages. Okay, I hope that helps. And that's it for activity one.